You can't go in there. It's not safe. There's re-rollers on the loose. Oh my god. Do you hear that? We gotta get out of here. All right. Now that we're safe, you need to know what's out there, champion. What we're about to show you is a list of the re-rolls we're predicting in Season 4. Now, if you want a game plan, the best advice I can give you is to check out our brand new add-on available right now at SkillCap.com. With the click of a button, it can configure your entire UI and set up everything you need to dominate an arena, from Gladius to weak auras, custom unit frames, and more. As a SkillCap member, you can even access premium profiles, including nameplates fully customized for every spec, allowing you to easily track debuffs and CC with absolutely zero clutter, giving you more damage and more awareness. We've spent hundreds of hours making our add-on to not only save you time, but also to make sure you can hit your rating goals this season. So head over to SkillCap.com using the links below to download our add-on today and learn how we guarantee you can gain 400 rating this season just by using our service. Alright, now let's get back to the video. Alright guys, let's kick things off with the three best melee for Season 4. There are two obvious choices, the first being Windwalker Monk. This spec seems to have been under the radar for the past few months, as most eyes were on Demon Hunter for Season 3. Now that the dust has settled, monks might actually wind up being the best melee and solo shuffle for a few reasons. If you watched our recent video ranking burst damage, you already know that Windwalker cooldowns are scarier than Swifty with a Berserker buff and a Pocket Healer. Without a doubt, the main threat posed by the spec is the enormous damage spike during Serenity. This is one of those cooldowns that warrants an entire air horn on weak auras, especially now that monks will have their best tier set. The two-piece and four-piece feed into one another to increase both Fist of Fury and Rising Sun Kick damage, and most players aren't even aware of just how much damage a single Fist of Fury channel can do. Additionally, because of the Turbo Fist's PvP talent, the channel can be hard to stop, allowing monks to squeeze out enormous damage in a flurry of blood and steel. Most people know that monk damage is scary, but what really flies under the radar is their defensive kit, which is one of the best in Solo Shuffle. What we've learned over the course of the expansion is that being a good Solo Shuffle spec means having strong damage reduction cooldowns and just as important is having the ability to avoid damage and deep dampening. Windwalker checks off both of these boxes. So right now, with the combination of lethal offensives and strong diverse defensive CDs, Windwalker is definitely up there as a spec to main in Season 4. The second obvious choice for a melee to main in Season 4 is, of course, Demon Hunter. Checking solo shuffle stats in the early season might be a bit misleading, and we're expecting DH stocks to rise. For one, it's important to remember that Demon Hunters had one of the best tier sets last season, and was even bugged until hotfixes in mid-March. But even after its damage was nerfed, Demon Hunters were still topping the meters and seemed to do so in early Season 4, despite many players not having their full tier sets. Just like Windwalker Monk, DH has everything you want in a class for solo shuffle, having a strong burst window combined with an entire arsenal of defensive CDs. We will get to this in a moment, but some of the metacasters this season can be exceptionally brutal for other melee, but Demon Hunters generally have fewer issues in caster-heavy lobbies thanks to their incredible mobility. In the past, DH was gated by Sub Rogue, which seems to be one of the worst specs in the game this season, with many rogues hopping ship to play assassination, giving DH less natural predators to deal with. So despite some early season trends, we are pretty confident that Demon Hunter might continue to be a highly dominant spec inside a solo shuffle. Now normally, we give three suggestions for every role, and our last one is a bit of a coin toss. Both Rhett Paladin and Asa Rogue seem to be great options in the early season, but for different reasons. Right now, Rhett Paladin is feeling like an absolute tank. The early stages of the season means everyone is running around with way more versatility than normal, which adds even more value to ret defenses. On top of this, games seem to be progressing a bit slower, and it's not uncommon for solo shuffle rounds to regularly go over two minutes. This crucial cutoff point means not only is dampening stacked high, but Crusade can be used for a second time, and the stacking damage is a win condition of its own. We know that ret Paladin can feel exceptionally brutal into caster heavy lobbies, but against everything else, its utility kit is enough to slot it into a bunch of different comps, even acting as a soft counter to our other melee recommendation, Assassination Rogue. This is a spec that slowly took over the ladder in Season 3 and has continued to do well in Season 4. The spec was hit by a mix of nerfs and buffs, seeing less burst damage on King's Bane and weaker Imp Garrett's being slightly offset by buffs to the King's Bane dot. But despite this, we think Asa is looking pretty good. In fact, looking at early representation data, Assassination has the lead over the other two rogue specs by a very wide margin. One possible explanation is that Asa is far less reliant on its tier set compared to Outlaw and Sub, but we think it's much deeper than that. 
The reworked Indiscriminate Carnage not only made Acid much easier to play, but also acted as a much more convenient way to stack up Scent of Blood, especially against pet classes. In the right lobbies, Acid Rogues can absolutely crush on damage thanks to AoE bleeds, and even have a very clear 1 minute win condition with Shadow Dance and Kingsbane. All of this has turned Asa into a dual threat, having the sort of rot damage to stress out healers and deep dampening, while also having the single target burst needed to actually close out games by themselves. The main issue facing Asa Rogue is any lobby containing both an Evoker and Paladin, as bleed dispels can easily counter Kingsbane, but outside of these two classes, Assassination feels good. Moving on to our next role, the pool of viable ranged DPS has continued to expand in Season 4, and competition is pretty stiff for the top three spots. The reign of Destro Warlock seems to have come to an end, and now Balanced Druid is emerging on top. There are multiple reasons why we projected Boomies to do so well in the final season of the expansion, but before we get into it, let's talk about why Balanced Druid is generally good in Solo Shuffle. The obvious ability most people point to is Cyclone, and of course, this will continue to be one of the best CCs in Season 4, especially as haste values are expected to go higher. But the real advantage Boomy has in the bracket is very similar to Ret Paladin. The fact that its main cooldown is not only long-lasting, but also can be used twice in most games, once during the opener and then a second time at that crucial two-minute mark where damage starts to become unhealable. The ability to win off raw damage alone is a huge win, especially considering Boomkin Burst is entirely instant cast and hard to avoid. In Season 4, not only will Boomkins be seeing more haste values and have greater flexibility with itemizing mastery, but the return of their Season 2 tier set will mean even more burst damage during that crucial second incarnation. For some reason, their tier set was actually buffed on May 7th, so expect to see even more burst coming from Boomies. Of course, none of this would matter if Boomkin's survivability is an issue, but after some buffs in the middle of Season 3, Boomkins are tankier than before. The buff to Frenzied Regeneration was actually an indirect buff to Heart of the Wild, which is an exceptionally strong cooldown in Solo Shuffle, lasting 45 seconds and acting as a buffer to reach that crucial second incarn. Outside of Boomkin, there are lots of viable contenders for good specs to main in Season 4. The entire Mage class seems to be an obvious choice, with Frost likely being the best spec out of the three. In the past, it was difficult to recommend Frost as a top three spec, as Destro Warlocks and even Balanced Druids seem to be so far ahead of the meta. But with competition slimming, Season 4 might signal the rise of Mage. Currently, Frost is doing really well on the leaderboards, and there are some potential explanations. For one, Frost is less reliant on its tier set compared to other specs, and generally only plays with its two-piece, which you technically don't even need if you're playing Glacial Spike. This has given Frost a potential gearing advantage in the early season, but again, we think there is more to explain their recent success. Not only are Warriors and Ret Paladins the most common melee in the bracket, but Resto Druids have become less represented overall, likely due in part to the rise of other healers, which we will get to in a bit. It's not like Resto Druid is suddenly worse, but since it was such a difficult matchup for mages, the loss of a natural predator coupled with the ability to harass melee heavy lobbies seems like a massive win for Frost mains. And while it might seem like a broken record at this point, Frost is another spec with a good 2 minute cooldown. Right now, with the games being noticeably slower, the second use of Icy Veins can carry a lot of momentum in the late game allowing Frost to close out rounds with raw damage alone. Our third pick for a good spec to main is Devastation Evoker, which also seems to be doing well on the early season leaderboards. While many players are mourning the loss of the Devastation tier set, we think that Evoker might be one of the biggest benefactors from this season's massive item level jump. With even more mastery and increased versatility, Evoker Burst should be getting better on paper, even accounting for the loss of last season's set bonuses. What also makes Devastation better on paper this season is the rise of Asa Rogues, where Cauterizing Flame is a soft counter to the entire spec. The fact that this can trade 1 to 1 into Kingsbane, or even 2 to 1 into Deathmark, is enough to keep Assassination at bay, and is even good against Arms Warriors and Feral Druids. And finally, as we mentioned in our recent tier list, Devastation's survivability might actually be better than we used to think. Early season games can be a bit misleading with everyone suddenly being injected with versatility, but even last season, Devastation was feeling quite bulky after some buffs to defensive passives on the Evoker Tree. Combine this with two charges of Obsidian Scales and bigger Rescue Shields, and Devastation can actually be quite tanky. And of course, with one of the best two-minute cooldowns in the entire game, the spec has that much-needed late-game burst to close out rounds, which is why we're recommending it as a good spec to main in the early season. All right, now it's time for healers, starting with what we project to be the two trending flavor of the month specs. First up is Holy Priest, which you maybe didn't expect, but hear us out. The rework to Priest last season included a pretty significant buff to Light Well, which really wasn't adopted into the meta until recently. As it turns out, having a big bursty heal that can proc on demand while you are CC'd is pretty good, and the fact that it can be CDR'd makes it even better. As we continue to say throughout this video, having strong two-minute CDs is really important in Solo Shuffle, especially right now with the game feeling a bit slow 
slower. The rework last season also included a redesign to Imperial Blaze, which saves an entire global for the spec, while giving it a much easier time to contribute on damage, which Holy Priest can actually do a lot of. While the spec was hit by a nerf to mana and angel form, we don't think they will suddenly fall off. But as the season progresses, one thing that might hurt Holy Priest this season is the rise of Boomkins, with Root Beam being an annoying CC to deal with unless you are Gnome, since Escape Artist is an easy one-to-one -one trade. So if you haven't already, be sure to equip a credit card and hit up the Blizzard store. Holy Priest isn't the only healer to make gains, and some of you meta-savvy viewers already know that Preservation of Ochre has made huge gains in the early season, which we expect to continue in the coming weeks. Seriously, if you've played any solo shuffle as a DPS recently, you probably realize just how difficult it is to win against any Preservation of Ochre team. With damage being a bit slower, their wall of CDs feels even higher, and in just a few weeks, you can expect Evokers to have even better healing thanks to the return of one of the best tier sets in the entire game. So if you thought winning against Evokers was hard now, just wait. And as we mentioned earlier, Evokers are a soft counter to some entire specs thanks not only to Cauterizing Flame, but also their AoE Dispel, which has generated more Resto Druid tiers than the burning of Teldrassil. Overall, it just seems like Preservation Evokers have the most agency out of any healer in Solo Shuffle. Defensively, they are still controlling the pace of the game quite well, and offensively, they have the right set of tools to actually help their team win. Of course, your mileage may vary, as the spec might do worse at lower ratings, where players are likely to run around like headless chickens, but for most players, Preservation Evoker is a solid pickup in Season 4. Now, for our last healer, we had a few choices, since there was no immediate standout, but even though it has trended down so far, we still think Resto Druid will be a safe pick as a well-rounded Solo shuffle healer. Druid is one of those specs that seems to rely heavily on crafted gear for optimal stats since it doesn't really benefit from having high versatility early on. Couple this with a pretty heavy reliance on tier sets, and it makes sense that Resto Druid might be having a slow start in weeks 1 and 2. With that said, Resto Druids are still going to feel pretty reliable in the early season, and with damage being slower, that second incarnation will feel like discovering an oasis in the desert of dampening. So even though Druids might not be the most exciting or trendy healer for the meantime, their single target HPS and late game Cyclones are still enough to carry. Alright guys, before we wrap up, if you want to try our brand new add-on, be sure to head over to skillcap.com. We can configure every PvP add-on in a matter of seconds and give you a highly competitive UI designed to make sure you can hit your rating goals. While you're visiting our website, you can preview all of our incredible courses with over 300 hours worth of content and learn why skillcap.com is the only place that guarantees you will gain rating. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount link below. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.